India established diplomatic relations with Botswana immediately after its independence in 1966 and opened its diplomatic mission in Gaborone in 1987. After the presentation of credentials and all the other ceremonies, what has transpired as a result over the last three decades? The High Commission appears to be moving beyond its diplomacy mandate as seems to be the order of the day. Beyond facilitating visas and the like, both cultural and business ties have been forged by the office. And according to the office, India and Botswana now share a working relationship characterized by the exchange and training of professionals in the military, medicine, education and other disciplines. Indian companies from various industries like Bank of Baroda, NIIT Botswana and Mahindra Botswana have set up office in the country and become part and parcel of the business landscape. Our inquiry tonight reveals, however, that there are even more exciting things on the horizon for the India-Botswana partnership. Join us as we sit down with the High Commissioner of India to Botswana, Mr. Madhava Chandra, Mr. Raj Chawla, Councillor at the Indian High Commission, and Mr. Gopal Adanki, the Chairperson of the India-Botswana Chamber of Commerce and Industry, IPKI for short, to delve into what this long-standing relationship has in store for business people on both continents. Welcome to First Issues. What major economic development can Botswana celebrate as a direct result of its relationship with India? This is a question we asked the High Commissioner. The first point I'd like to make in this connection is that the ties between India and Botswana are ancient and civilizational. India established diplomatic relations with Botswana almost since its independence in 1966 and the relations every year have been strengthened step by step. Invariably the question I have always been put and wherever I address the one question that is invariably asked from me is do you think Botswana provides a level playing field for all countries to do their business? The answer is a clear and firm yes. It provides a firm playing field which is totally level. The large community's presence here is a sizable Indian community, uh, quite strong, almost uh, seven to 8,000 people. And most of them are in different uh, businesses uh, and also in different professions. That uh, itself speaks of uh, the business uh, uh, groundwork which they have already done here. And this is this gives the background of India's India and Botswana's business relations. Apart from there, uh, there are other uh, hallmarks in the business. We have uh, signed a number of agreements between the two countries, uh, not only in business sphere but also in culture and almost uh, even in the defense sector. Each country in Botswana has its own space to expand in. India has got its own space to expand in. X country has got its own space to expand in. Y country has its own space to expand in. And yes, the government of India has seized each and every opportunity to expand further in Botswana. And the new focus of India's foreign policy in the last three heads of missions conference that I have gone to New Delhi, I have been told loud and clear that the new focus of India's foreign policy is the African continent. And more particularly so, the southern part of Africa, including the SADC countries of which Botswana is very much a member. And as far as the new initiatives that have been taken, you know, just to name a few, 
in the very recent past, the Jindal Steel and Power Group, the Jindal Africa Group, you know, they are planning to open up in the next two to three years two 300 megawatt thermal power units. And after the opening up of these two 300 megawatt power units, eventually it will go up to 1200 megawatt power units. And what this would eventually mean is that Botswana would become a net exporter of electricity and power to its neighbors. Today it's heavily dependent on South Africa. Once these thermal power units of the Jindal group come up, then Botswana will be exporting electricity to its neighbors. And this is only one dimension. Along with it, they have plans to export coal from Botswana. And Botswana, as we all very well know, is a landlocked country. So the Trans-Kalahari Highway Project, which already exists, parallel to that, they are planning to build a Trans-Kalahari Railway Project connecting the Mamambula coal fields and other coal fields to the Valvis Bay. Now, exports via the Valvis Bay will be a little more expensive because the journey the ships will have to undertake will be a little longer than say if the exports have taken from the port city of Mozambique. But notwithstanding, new avenues are being explored and the Chindals have come here to stay. They have not yet been able to issue the PPA, but very soon the PPA will be issued and the general project will take off. And you talked about which are the new initiatives. You see, in overall terms, the Apollo group of hospitals have been here. The Sankre Netrale people from Chennai, they conducted free cataract operations. A team of doctors descended upon Botswana. You see, I'll tell you something. Madam, when we talk about Botswana, I have done postings the world over. Botswana has a population of 2 million people. The size of the Indian community, as my uh, colleagues just now said, is about eight or to 10,000 people. Out of this, 3,000 have acquired local Botswana citizenship, you know. But it's my privilege and pride to be able to say that Hebrone alone has got seven Hindu temples, three mosques, and there are only 45 Sikh families, and they have a huge palatial Gurudwara. In no capital in the, in the whole of Africa, I have been director of West Asia and North Africa in Delhi in the Ministry of External Affairs, and I have traveled extensively over the whole of Northern Africa, Algeria, Morocco, Sudan, Addis Ababa, uh, Egypt, all these countries. In no capital of the world will, uh, will you find with such a tiny population seven huge, magnificent temples. And if you visit any of these temples, you must see with your own eyes the architecture. And this compounded with the economic initiative we are taking. And what makes it our economic thrust unique is that we have got intermediate technology. So in the capacity building exercise that we do, when we send a whole lot of scholarships, my learned colleague will elaborate on the capacity building program that the government of India has undertaken. But I'll just mention one thing. When we send the students to our training vocational institutes, you know, to impart skilled professional training, they return with a simple diploma. But in a few years' time, you know, they have achieved positions of preeminence in the bureaucratic, hierarchical, elite circles of Botswana. And every year, I have an old alumni association of our ITEC scholars. 
and I asked many of them to relate what India meant for them, the six months stay in India. And you know very often what they say? They say only one word, it was magic, you know? And they are moved to tears when they recount the stories about what experiences they had undergone in India. So business and economics all apart. Look at the human angle, you know, it's tremendous. Your comment that each country represented in Botswana has its own space of operation is a very interesting one. What has India identified as its own space? How has this informed uh, India's strategy towards doing business in Botswana? Small, medium and tiny sector industries, agriculture, agro-industries, downstream products, you know, particularly in the coal uh, f field and diamond industry and sectors like this, you know, where India has its core competency. IT, IT in particular, IT. yes, teleconferencing, telemedicine and all that, you know. We have tied up with the Bokodal School and uh, uh, Mr. Raj, you elaborate on this. In fact, uh, uh, in 2010, we inaugurated on, on a, a pan-African level. It was uh, for the entire African countries, uh, a tele-education program. It was both in tele-education as well as telemedicine. So from, uh, from India, there were two universities uh, which were involved. One was MIT University and another was uh, the Indira Gandhi Open uh, University. So these two universities were telecasting direct programs for the benefit of, uh, uh, you also have a, a open university like Bokodol. So Bokodol uh, was involved and there was a, a separate uh, classroom was set up uh, where there was a deli direct telecast of uh, educational programs and the lectures which were telecast on certain, you know, there, used, there was a timetable according to which they, they used to be, uh, they were relaying these programs for the benefit of the students here. And students on the basis of that, uh, uh, um, that uh, uh, the curriculum which was drawn by these universities, uh, they were following up and were sitting for the exams and obtained the degrees. Having been given a very comprehensive view of the collaborations that have been done in the fields of medicine, education and the like, one wonders what unique opportunities does the Botswana-India relationship present for local entrepreneurs? There was a delegation uh, uh, only just six months back from uh, which Leah I think hosted from Indian Leather Export Promotion Council. So there were people who came here as part of an incubation center, you know, they, there's a, also an agreement between LIA and National Small Industries Corporation of India, you know, this NSIC it's called. NSIC's job is to uh, create an incubation center, incubation industry for them. So as per the agreement between LIA and NSIC, when they approach the local Moswana approach for if he has a capital or uh, uh, he wants a specific expertise in that field, uh, that is made uh, tailor made for that individual, that entrepreneur, Moswana entrepreneur and he can, he can come, uh, he can establish the module here itself uh, in, in Moswana and I think leather is one of the sector where, where a lot of uh, Moswana can uh, uh, you know, engage in and develop this industry in a big way. Your Excellency, I'm happy to hear that you have found us as a tiny country to be very accommodating uh, to investors. But what would you say are the major challenges for doing a business in Africa and in Botswana specifically? One of the concerns is that, uh, uh, you know, not uh, easy accessibility to getting uh, visas very, you Getting know, a business visa. visa. Uh, it is, uh, it takes quite a while uh, to processing visas for Indians. There is an inordinate delay invariably in the grant of business visas to genuine Indian businessmen 
who wants to come and do business in Botswana. And this position has to be rectified in Delhi by the Botswana High Commission present in Delhi. You know, we recently, uh, I'll just give an example of, uh, yesterday there was a delegation which, uh, I mean that on last Friday, uh, there was a delegation in the banking sector. Uh, Bank of Botswana had a small uh, three-member delegation which came here. It was, you know, they wanted to come and inspect their own establishment here. Uh, uh, I just uh, like to, you know, briefly add here that uh, uh, Botswana has already given license uh, to operate two new Indian banks here, that is uh, State Bank of India and Bank of India. When uh, the three members were to come here, uh, it took them uh, almost four weeks to get the visa. And the entire plan when they make uh, uh, to visit here to do certain meetings, uh, that gets uh, heavy and that uh, they are not able to uh, stick to the schedule they want to uh, what what's holding up you know this uh, this should this should be this needs to be streamlined in a in a more uh, uh, better needs more attention you know profound macroeconomic reforms in africa since 1995 have tamed inflation and opened economies to international trade greatly improving the situation on the continent indeed Three distinct sources of data indicate that returns on investment are higher here than in other regions. In outlining India's economic strategy, our guests divulge other factors behind the recent surge of interest in our part of the world. Train us to hear what they had to say after the break. Is this relationship that you have so thoroughly detailed indicative of your approach to Botswana specifically or for India's overall strategy for investing in Africa? Well, to explore and uh, find out what potential areas are there in which effectively India, with whatever we have, we can move in swiftly. You see, India is an emerging power alongside China uh, as two one of the major economic giants in 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 Asia. Uh, India has been uh, steadily recording a growth of seven um, percent plus. Uh, with these, you know, uh, it's always. Uh, the uh, requirement of uh, raw material that grows with that. Uh, uh, coming to the raw material, when we see, you know, we have uh, the depleting resources and here, here we come in, you know, to explore in Africa. And Botswana is one of the countries where we can look forward to exploring and having, uh, like uh, coal, for example, is one commodity which we need it for power and uh, 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 there are other uh, resources like you know other mineral resources uh, which which uh, uh, copper and other minerals which we need for our growing industries so uh, i should say you know that is one factor this which is driving us to africa like many other countries also i think in the same way this interest in raw materials is bound to cause some understandable unease in light of a past in which other nations profited from Africa's rich resources at her expense. How does India aim to ensure that collaborations result in win-win outcomes? Could you kindly clarify as to how this interest in Africa's natural resources is a win-win for both parties, especially for those that might see it as a plundering of Africa's resources? To see a business viability, always it should be pragmatic and practical. If you look at from back home the technology, where we bring in the expertise, it will be cost effective and economic based. And especially in place like Botswana, where we need to create the entrepreneurial ability and giving them self-confidence. You need to bring them the cost-effective measures, maybe exploring the natural resources and turning it into the power 
or taking it from the agricultural sector. There are many things that we can bring in new forms and new methods where we can take the Botswana population with us and try to give them the pilot projects and which will turn employment, which will create confidence in the young entrepreneurs and which will create a vibrant Botswana. At the recent World Telecommunications and Information Society Day commemorations held in Shorobe, hosted by Bokra, government encouraged residents to embrace the use of ICTs to improve their lives. While the minister's message is enlightening, we wondered, has the government taken into account the importance of security when promoting these new technologies? in light of news of increasing internet crimes and abuses and internet scams becoming more and more sophisticated. What measures are in place to keep Botswana protected from abuse and other crimes? internet. <laughs> Rise or a lemola wa cyber crime, o it ba hands and liburu kut yoboka dirwang, kamaranyania. Me oromente umotula hanyo, yahum sahasa malawa cyber crime. Ra hudira melawe mewe, eset sing ho kwalwa hayo nehusimoloze. O anghui teba hanya le di kwebo, le papadi, e dirwang kamaranyana di computer. More rinki e commerce. Remote to Lahanyu Yahu Dira Molao, wa e signature. Remote to Lahanyu Yahu Dira Molao, wa data protection. Kore di Tsama iso zote, seba to badi dirang, kari ka internet, li computer. Yubo di siri let's read. Kore ba peba bata zu lo lang, eh, si pirisa ba bangwe, kati riso amaranyanya. If you would like a recap of this show or any other First Issues episode, feel free to find us on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. From me, Nametso Sibina, the team behind First Issues, our sponsors, First National Bank, Fermilenge. We shall meet again.